Good morning, it's 20 past eight. Still to come on this morning's show, a half past eight, we'll have all your news and weather, plus the latest sports headline and Jude's, Jude's gig guide at 8.45. In a few minutes, dating tips with our manners expert, William Howrood Hansen. But first, I've been testing out some of my best lines on the streets of Manchester. Nicky's been chatting up, fellas. Let's take a look. Well, love is in the air, and with Valentine's Day finally upon us, we've decided to hit the streets of Manchester to find out just how romantic you guys really are. And I wanted to try out some of my best lines, a la, if I was to say to you, you've got a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Evans, touch me again and I'll be calling the police. May I check the label in your jacket, please? OK. I just wanted to know if it was said, made in heaven. Oh. <laughs> That's really bad. Does that not work on you? No, absolutely not. Do you believe in love at first sight or should I walk past again? Did it hurt? <laughs> no. No. Ah, <laughs> you know which line was coming next, didn't you? <laughs> Do I know any chat up lines? Um, I can't think of any. Valentine's Day, does it have any special significance to you, sir? No. Um, God, it's just one of many uh, feasts that have, I think have been overhyped. Why is that then? Is, is that because you're tight? Do you have a map? Uh, no. I keep getting lost in your eyes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do you think it's hot out here or is it you? Oh, bless you. Um... How was heaven when you left it? <laughs> Did you do anything special for Valentine's Day? Um, no, I'm working. Oh. But I might do something in the evening. Okay. We're going to Ireland to spend some time with his mother-in-law. How romantic! <laughs> well, I'm going to take him to... Um, <laughs> I don't know where. Where, where do you want to go, love? <laughs> is that a lad in your tights? Or is it a stairway to heaven? You can give me whatever you want. Your number would be nice. Will you be spoiling your lady friend this Valentine's Day? Yes. Have you got anything planned? I'm trying to get a book holiday. <gasps> you didn't hear that, did you? Do you believe in love at first sight or should I walk past again? How corny. Yeah. I'm new in town. I was wondering if you'd give me directions to your house. Do you have a map, by the way? A map? Yeah, because I keep getting lost in your eyes. Oh, that's really sweet of you, thank you. It's all overhyped, but she's worth it. Well, you've chipped in with overhyped first and foremost. Does this mean you're single? No, I'm getting married in June. Excuse me for staring, but I need to remember that face so I can see it in my dreams. How so, did you pull your missus then? Chat up lines involved, presumably. No, she uh, she gave me some stitches when I was fighting. Are you free tonight or will it cost me? It will cost you. <laughs> Do they work? Um, no. <laughs> Slightly? No. Your knee's not trembling even just a little bit. Are you free or will it cost me? <laughs> oh, oh, it'll cost, cost you. <laughs> Be your ideal lady to go on a Valentine's date with. <laughs> <I'm pulled. laughs> I've heard that milk does a body good, but oh my gosh, woman, holy cow, how much have you been drinking? I've just had a skinny latte. I understand now why King Solomon had 600 wives, because he never met you. Any chat-up line works for me. What would be your top tip then for anybody who's lonely at Valentine's Day this year? Any top tips you can pass on as a happily married man? Uh, find a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can I check the uh, label on the inside of your shirt? Yes, you I just want to see if it says if you were made in heaven. Oh, I understand why King Solomon had 600 wives, because he never met you. <laughs> I'd really start to worry. Yeah, shall I uh, go? Yeah. So with a pocket full of phone numbers, I think it's time to call it a day. Ladies, you are one hot breed here in Manchester. Mm, yes, and I've found that you guys out there aren't particularly romantic. I want to bring it back. So if you've got a special somebody, then why not tell them or indeed show them? Oh, you smell nice. Been jogging. Well, uh, we didn't do particularly well there, did we, really? Come on, come clean. But thankfully, William Hansen is in the house with some dating tips today. Where did we go wrong? How should you approach somebody that you like the look of? Well, the best thing to do is be natural and be yourself. Now, have, if yourself is like we saw on the VT, then probably don't bother to approach them. <laughs> However, don't patronise the person that you're going to go and see. Oh, why um, not? Well, because it's unfair on them. It's as if you're saying that you're more superior to them. And well, then that's people... so much fun, William. It might be fun, but it's not going to get you very far, is okay. it? No. Um, so just be yourself. Don't use cheesy chat-up lines. Um, just be natural. Do you have any chat-up lines, William? Do I personally have any chat-up lines? Well, no, however, there are a whole host of inappropriate chat-up lines, even more inappropriate than those. For example, my favourite is, your hair looks so natural, particularly in the left nostril. <laughs> <laughs> which, which apparently someone actually did use. This is where it actually came from. Okay, um, yeah. So, yes. It's... And did they pull? 
No, <laughs> unsurprisingly. No. So, your hair looks nice. Bit on a most bike. <laughs> That's a good yes, one. Yes, similarly to that, yes. So, uh, you're talking about uh, sort of compliments as mm. well. This is your second tip. So, they, yeah. they should be natural. They shouldn't be contrived. They should be. You shouldn't really have to think about them too much, I suppose. Precisely, yes. Just, you know, whilst there are all these rules that I'm just about to give about a sort of the, ha the dating etiquette, the best romance is supposed to be spontaneous. So, whilst my tips may help, don't worry too much about following them exactly to the letter because otherwise you're going to look a bit sort of forced. Um, so just try and be natural. But that's the same with compliments as well. OK. OK, what about um, arranging the day? You've, you've approached them, they seem to like you. How do you go in for the kill? Well, um, the, the line, do you want to go out on a date with me sometime, is a bit sort of American teen movie. Mm. Um, if you <laughs> say something, it'd be a little more decisive and say, would you like dinner on Thursday? Um, now, Thursday they may be at Pilates or something, or, or different. <laughs> so that gives them, that gives them with a, a graceful get-out clause. They, they could say no, but Saturday. Um, but they may also say yes, Thursday's absolutely fine for me. Um, so that gives, so there, there's room for manoeuvre on both sides there. Right, here's a topic that I mm -hmm. always had a problem with. Um, yeah. Contacting your date. OK, so you've actually arranged a meet-up. You think you've actually done quite well. She's agreed to go out with you. You're thanking the heavens. Yeah. When do you call her? Do you call her the day after you've spoken to her? Give it a couple of days. Is there a law? Is there a rule? There is a, a tip, okay. um, which is that you don't leave it too long, but don't sort of text her four hours after you've just met her because you'll look desperate and, and a bit sort of... Well, desperate. Sad. Yes, exactly. So, um, leave it about 24 hours when, when, after you've left her. Oh, so, so the next day's OK? Yeah, the next day's absolutely fine. Yeah. You've not been able to contact your dates because they've given you the wrong number, Byron, yeah. that's why. <laughs> that has actually <laughs> happened before, I've got to be honest. Oh, bless you. You mentioned texting there, sorry, Byron. Mm. Is that OK or should you call them? You should really, to begin with, call them. Texting is absolutely fine. However, if you keep texting, them, you only contact them via a text medium, so email or text, then there is probably going to be a problem that emerges down the line. There's nothing nicer than um, a voice-to-voice -voice conversation. Uh, An email's either. slightly impersonal, isn't it? It is slightly impersonal. Well, as well. speaking of impersonal, uh, once I got dumped by text. Oh, no. I, got, I, I really, I got kicked to the curb <laughs> by text. Um, how should you dump? Pro, don't laugh. How should you appro <laughs> appropriately dump someone? Um, well, by voice to voice, preferably face to face. Actually, take the courage. You know, have the courage to actually go and, and yeah, speak to. Which people. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the, the most important thing is remember that they have feelings too, unless. Um, they, you have cheated on them or they have cheated on you and, and they have proof, there's no reason to go in for it sort of, you know, a la EastEnders or, or all the soaps <laughs> and go with sort of irons and things and sort of clobber them to death. Um, just generally be polite and just remember their feelings and say, look, it's not working. Uh, would you um, advocate absolute honesty there or would you hold back slightly? I don't want to go out with you because your breath smells and your hair's disgusting. No, 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 no. I would, I would sort of just say, oh, it's, n it's not you, it's me. Oh, um, something like <laughs> that. It's, it's the oldest one in the book, yes. <laughs> OK, let's assume that you're not dumping them, it's all going swimmingly, and yep. you've arrived at the restaurant before your yes. first date. What do you do? Well, um, table manners are always necessary and always should be adhered to, but nowhere more than on a date. So, mouth closed when you're eating, don't take too big a mouthful, elbows off the table when you are mm -hmm. uh, actually eating. Pull out their chair, if it's a man to a lady. Um, <laughs> Women also, I know there's this whole feminist debate, you know, is it, is it sexist to pull out the chair? It's not going to erode everything feminists stood for if you just pull out one chair. And as equally, long as they don't <laughs> hit the floor. Exactly, as long as they don't, use, they don't hit the floor, correct. However, um, if, you know, if, if the woman is a feminist, obviously it's the first date, the man may not know that. The woman won't react badly to it, just accept it and, and sit down. And then in later conversation you can, you can bring it up. Um, offer wine, before, if, you, if your wine glass is empty, Pour uh, the ladies first before you refill yours. Have a don't keep filling it every five seconds because I think you've got improper motives. Um, <laughs> just fill it at, at, a <laughs> at a gradual rate. What about who pays for the bill? Well, on the first date, it should always be the man. Never go Dutch. They don't even go Dutch in Holland. You should. <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, never never split the bill. Have if you can't afford a sort of a, a fancy restaurant, it doesn't matter about fancy restaurant. Take them to McDonald's, but take a rose, put it on the table. It's about how special you make it, rather than relying on the restaurant to make it special. So go to somewhere within your price region, especially in the credit crunch, um, but never split the bill. Always the man on the first date. Okay. William, thank you thank very you much very for much. joining thank us. Insightful as ever. And, uh, well, some good, great Valentine tips there. But let's get the final...